You don't take for granted to find your way. Our GPS went out. Sir, we're lost. I said, well, what you talking about? You, the GPS went out. I said, y'all act like y'all don't know. Where were we last? Show me on the map. Least guys knew how to read a map. I don't believe we got a generation that don't know that 7-Eleven used to have a big little rack. <laughs> and maps were on there. Uh, kids have no clue of what they get lost. Where to, and we had to do a back asthma. If anybody know what that is? Tell me the last thing you see. I see these power lines. Where, where, I'm asleep. Everybody know officers sleep when we're riding now. <laughs> but, but anyway, uh, uh, we found our way. Did some back asthma and stuff like that. Last known position. Sometimes you, you got to do what you got to do. Amen. Uh, you you want to try it again? Try to see what's going on here. That it. it you, can you figure it out, Blake, what's happening with the system? You got to make sure that my mic is feeding, uh, line one is feeding in. That's all you have to do. All right, let's declare how we receive the word. Say, this is my Bible. It is God's holy word. Jesus said that it's spirit and it is life. Therefore, I cannot receive this word with my natural mind or my carnal intellect. Jesus so this word into my spirit, I shall and I will receive it. All right, I think we already passed the piece, but I want to just to take the time if we could. Um, we don't have to do children's church today, but if your children get loud at all, take them out. You going to do it? All right, she is going to do children's church. Okay, so y'all can go to children's church. Uh, pass the piece. Give somebody a hug. Let them know you're glad to see them. Come on. Hey, what you don't have on is the main speaker's not on. Um. Is it white? Hey, is it is it on down under? Is it is it on? All right, turn the monitor back on then. See what happens here, because I think what testing. Testing. Yeah, you, 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 what you got, sir, is this monitor's not on. Your main is not on. You got to turn up. The main is not on. So turn, the, turn that monitor off on the back on the wall. Turn the monitor off the wall and turn the main on. All right. You have to turn the main on from the... Is the red button up on the monitor? All right, and it's, and you gotta have the main um, thing on. All right. <laughs> All right, if we could uh, work our way back to our seats. Okay. Th anybody check it? Well, check it on your phone to make sure it's, you can hear the sound. Okay. All right, if we can have a seat, please. Uh, if everybody can get to their seats, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, last week, uh, we were, um, uh, as we were dealing with um, our topic, we have been, for those of you who are, who are new to our teaching, uh, I want to ask you, you can just go out on our YouTube channel. It would be um, Agape Christian Faith Center YouTube, or go to our webpage, agapecfc.org. Uh, and you can catch up with all of our teachings. But I want to, uh, we want to finish up today. We are talking about what time is it. We're talking about the end times. This is an interesting time for us uh, as a church because what we're doing is we're going through the whole New Testament in 30 days. Now, we're halfway finished. Who's, who's keeping up with me? A little behind. Well, well th today's the day to catch up. It's catch-up day. Turn the football off catch up yeah yeah and, and I think the football must have got a whole bunch of people I got up this morning uh at seven o'clock 
and and I was checking, you know, just getting myself together. I said, let me check the score. And it, the game was still on. I said, oh, it's going to be trouble at church today because somebody stayed up all night long to watch the game. Did you stay up all night long, sir, to watch the game? I knew it was a couple guys that just, I knew they didn't. Some people just, I guess they said, man, I can't make it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, <coughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, anyway, um, we've been talking about the end times, and I think it's great. You know, our church, we always go through the Bible every year. But to go through the New Testament, this is the first time I've ever done the New Testament in just 30 days. Because what happens is, as you well know, um, if you're a prolific reader, I like to read. The more, if you read stuff close together, you can retain it. It's kind of like some of you Air Force guys have to learn all of that PFE stuff and it's that thick. But if you do it over time, you always have to go back, then, don't you? Because you need it fresh in your mind. And so, but reading the New Testament and the way we're doing it is quite different. Because before, if you remember, wifey, we, w- we would do Matthew, Mark, Luke, and what happened is you would get all the synoptic gospels together. But what we're doing now, we're reading one of the, the way the plan is, is one of the gospels. Then you go to Romans and you, then you may go to Corinthians. Then you come back to another gospel because the gospels really are an account of the same event from different angles and from different people. But it really helps to solidify, you know, what it is that you've read. Amen. All right. Uh, we, 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 we was looking at. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 1 through 3, and um, uh, Jesus was sternly rebuking, you know, the religious leaders of his day, and he was um, um, letting them understand that you're looking for a sign. You were looking for a sign. He was talking really about his first coming. Here's what he said. Then the the Pharisees and the Sadducees came uh, to test Jesus, commanding uh, that he show them a miracle, a miraculous sign from heaven Uh, to prove his authority. He replied, when it's evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red, and in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red, and threatening. Hypocrites, you know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the time. What, what the, uh, what the uh, Sadducees and Pharisees were trying to do was they really miss the, 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 the signs in the Old Testament of the coming of Messiah. You know, if we look at the Old Testament, when we read the Old Testament, and, and I think many of you, some of you are coming into the faith trying to understand the Word of God. And if I can put it this way for you, the Old Testament Although laborious in some of the genealogies and that sort of thing, it's important that you read Old Testament scripture because the Old Testament is the shadow or uh, it's it's things that are hidden, but the revealing of the hidden thing is in the New Testament. So the foundation of what we believe is really in the Old Testament scripture. You know, as we get ready to prepare ourselves, uh, November the 3rd, we're going to go to Israel uh, for me, it will be like the 10th and 11th time, and uh, it's going to be an exciting time because to be in the land of the book changes everything. So when you pick up the Bible, and, and, and he was on the Sea of Galilee, and we're on the Sea of Galilee teaching from the Sea of Galilee, or when Jesus heard of, when, he was, when John baptized him and he, there was a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. Some of you I'm going to baptize in that very same Jordan River or in the Garden of Gethsemane, it really helps you uh, to have some sense of um, uh, of time, space, and the Word, and it will help you solidify it. Those of you who go, you'll never be the same again. I guarantee you that. We talked about uh, five things. We talked about two already that uh, would happen before the time ends or before Uh, Jesus comes again. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, they're on the Mount of Olives, and uh, the disciples are with him, and they asked him this question, the same question that everybody's asking, even now. We're at a place right now, I don't think this time has been any more different than 1999. Y'all remember 1999, December? 
Uh, and everybody thought K, YK, Y2K, and everybody thought it was going to be the end. There were, there were ill-informed pastors gathering their congregations on the 31st of December saying Jesus is coming back. And the scripture clearly says no one knows the, the date or the hour. But people were gathered in churches because everybody thought they were going to lose all of their income. People were selling stuff and getting rid of stuff. And I mean, it was just crazy. And then guess what happened? Nothing. People lost everything. Pastors lost credibility. And it was crazy. I don't think that there is a time that even more uh, interesting in that regard than right now. Because you got right openly being called wrong. I mean, I mean, I mean, you want me to call you a woman and I'm looking at a man. I'm not playing a game. I'm too old now. You know, it's like when I was in the military, what are you going to do, bend my dog tags? At this point, what are you going to do to me now after all of this? Here's the point. We've got people who are playing games, but the enemy's not playing a game. He's playing for keeps. And we're trying to hold on to our jobs and salvage this and salvage that. But it's coming a time where we used to say you need to fish or cut bait. It's time to make a decision of who you're going to serve. And I'm telling you, it's coming more and we can see it. The time is coming where people are having to make some real serious choices about what are they going to really do. Huh? The Bible talks about offense. Many are going to be offended. Right here in back chapter 24, Jesus is asked, well, when are you coming back again? He tells them, the number one thing he tells them is this, don't be deceived. And what is happening right now? Deception and strong delusion is everywhere. People are totally deceived. Huh? I mean, I mean, you know, we, we can look at we can look at the governmental arena. We can look at look at the school system. Huh? Look, look at the school system. How in the world do you send your kid to school? Huh? And your little baby is being groomed and you don't even know it. She came today, says she wants to be a fireman. The next day she wants to be a boy. So what they're doing now is now she don't want to be a fireman. She wants to, not a firewoman, she, or a policewoman, she wants to be a, a boy. So behind your back, they're grooming your child to be a boy. California's passed a law. If you intervene in that process, we're putting you in jail. That is a law. There are law in two states in America. Uh, uh, Want to know, I'll be in jail all the time. When somebody would, uh, 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 welcome to McDonald's, how can I help you? I said, can I, uh, thank you, sir. I'm not a sir. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. I'm not going to play games with you. I'm not going to do it. Here, lock me up, but I'm not playing your stupid game. There's always, already countries in, 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 in Europe. You misgender somebody, you're going to jail. We're in a time right now, the church is so downstream of culture that the church is really reacting. There, there is no, there is, you know, there's no one really want to say truth. Chaplains, what are they good for? When I was in, we got ready to go to war, and the commander asked me, the guy who's the operations officer at S3, to pray. Ask the chief of staff who was not the chaplain to pray. That was 28 years ago. You know they worthless now. Chaplains are worthless. Because they're too afraid. They're going to get up and pray. And the Bible says if you are a Christian pastor, the only way to pray is in Jesus' name. Don't tell me about in his name and the name. There's only one name. And his name is Jesus. That's why every time when folk in here will get promoted, they want me to come and pray. Because I ain't praying in no crazy name. I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And that's what you do. We got folk that are scared. If chaplains are afraid, what, what, what is anybody else going to do? We can't offend what Jesus said, I come to put you against your mother and father. I can't offend nobody. He, I said, I, he said, I came. To put you against that. 
But we're at a point right now, we want to be liked. We're Facebook generation. When Facebook came out, they should have came out where I don't like. Everybody wants to be liked. But that's not how you get into the kingdom of God. The Bible says the kingdom what? Suffered what? Violence. And the violent do what? Take it by force. And at some point, we need to understand, if I'm new coming into the things of God, I don't want to hear no milk toast sermon cause let me, and, and milk toast gospel. Because let me tell you something. The Bible, the gospel is free. But it is a price you have to pay with your life. You got to say, you know what? I'm giving my life to God. And at that point, guess what happens? A lot of things change for you. You just can't change emotionally. You got to change from the inside out. And Jesus is on the Mount of Olives, and his disciples are asking the question. So, well, you know, when is going to be the time? When is going to be the sign of your coming? When, 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 when are you going to? When, when are you going to come? When, what, 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 what's happening? He said, "Be careful that you don't be deceived." And then he goes on and says, "He said there's going to be wars." He said, there's going to be rumors of wars. He said, there's going to be earthquakes uh, in diverse places. Uh, uh, you know what you might want to try? Turn on the television sets, because I'm watching my monitor back here. Something, something is, obviously, you might be able to help them now. All right. Uh, but uh, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. He said there's going to be earthquakes and diverse places. He says, see that no one troubles you because all these things are going to come to pass, but the, yet, but, but the end is not yet. He's sitting there talking to him, and he's saying, Jesus, when are you going to come? And then in verse 10, here's what he said. He said, many will be offended. Hmm? He said they're going to betray one another. They're going to hate one another. When you know we're getting close is when folk in the church are always offended. Hmm? I, it, 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 you know, he's talking about not the world, many. Who are the many? The many, he says, and then many, huh? Many, many. Who are the many? And then he says down in about 12 or 13, he says, and the love of many, the word love in the little Greek is this word behind me, agape. Huh? And who can have agape love? Only Christians. So if the love of many will wax cold, he's talking about the love in the church. Here's the problem. We're in a place right now where Christians are offended for the word's sake. You got pastors apologizing for preachers that preach like me. Well, you know, uh, you know he, if we, we love everybody, and uh, I love everybody. And I won't apologize for the church because they've been too hard on homosexual uh, um, uh, LBGDQ church. There is no such thing as an LBGDQ church. It can't be. Because this Bible says that we are the bride of Christ and uh, come on here. And the bride of Christ is God is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. And he's already called this an abomination. So I'm not playing your game. You can say I'm angry. You can say I'm nasty. But if I don't tell you the truth, I really don't love you. And that's where we are right now. We've got people who are not confident in what the word says. And so we want to be our own gods. Hmm? Oh, don't let it happen to your house. Don't let your son say, I'm, Daddy, I'm gay. Or your daughter say, I'm gay. So, and then here's what the world says. Well, Mama, if you love me, you'll support me. Mama, if you love me, Daddy, if you love me, I, I, I'm, I'm still yours. I love you. Let me ask you a question. If your son came to the house and said, uh, I just got through robbing a bank and I killed two people uh, in doing I just need to hide out in the basement for a couple of days so things blow over. I think I still know how to do it. I'll send up flares. Huh? I'll send a pigeon. Police will be at my house just like that. Come get them. So how could you cover, wouldn't want to cover that crime, but you're covering the other crime? You know why? Because we, the world wants to pull on our heartstrings. 
and make you more. Con Listen, you can't be more loving than God. Think about it for just a second. How could you be, human being, more loving and caring than God? And God said it, it was an abomination. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. There are five things I mentioned that I said that was going to happen before Jesus comes again. You know, Y2K and all that stuff, don't get tricked. Five things are going to happen. First time in Israel in 94, uh, I witnessed something, you know, this called this di diaspora. The, 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 the Jews are spread all over the place. And there was the coming home uh, in May of 1994 when I first was there um, of Ethiopian Jews coming back to Israel. There were plain loads of black Ethiopian Jews coming back to Israel, coming to Israel. Jews are coming uh, from all over the world, from Europe, from the United States, from North America. They're coming everywhere. The first or the super sign that we're coming toward the end of the age is the repatriation of Jews back to Israel. In 1948, when Israel became a state, there was only 6% of the world's Jews that were in Israel. By the time of 2030, there will be 40%. I think right now there's 30%. By 2040 or 2030 or something like that, it will be 40% of the world population of Jews back in Israel. Sign number one is there's going to be a repatriation. There is going to be a gathering of Jews back to Israel. See, what we need to understand that the Judaism uh, is, the, is like the tree, but we're grafted into the tree. It's an interesting kind of a phenomena when we deal with the uh, different religions of the world, the pantheistic religions, those religions uh, that serve many gods. You know, we have no commonality really with these, with these religions or any religion except for one. Uh, and then the monolithic religions are the ones that believe in only one God. Uh, Islam believes that there's only one God. Uh, Judaism believes there's only one God. But the problem with those two religions, uh, they're mistaken about who the God is. See, for you to hear that we're not really compelling with Judaism, it's really not to understand Scripture. Let's deal with, first of all, Islam. They believe that their Allah is God, but how can Allah be God when even in their Quran they say Jesus is a prophet? Every other uh, pantheistic religion from Hinduism and, 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 and Buddhism, and all, they mention Jesus as being a significant figure, but not God. Judaism, they obviously don't see him to be God because they don't believe that Jesus has come. If you ever been to a Passover Seder, we've had the rabbi here a couple of two or three times. We've done the Seder. And what happens is you leave an empty chair. Why? At the meal. Because Messiah has not yet come. So how could we be talking about the same God when we say Jesus is Lord, they don't even believe he came yet. He's a teacher. I don't know how they relate to him, but they don't relate to him as God. And so it's interesting that even though these are God's chosen people, I think the real mystery for me in Scripture is God has got something special for them, and it's obviously, those of us who have any kind of military background, when you go and we fly in there, it's really indefensible now. It was really indefensible maybe 30 years ago, but the way weaponry is now, we can shoot artillery many miles. The width of Israel is so skinny, you, the, the how fast aircraft come in? I used to be an air defense artillery officer. You know how far out I have to engage an airplane that was coming when we were on the border uh, uh, defending Germany from east? They had to be on the other side. I'm painting targets on the other side in Czech and, and, and on the other side of East Germany if I got a chance to get them before they could release their payload and get into Western Germany. You can only imagine now they're faster. 
weapons are more lethal, you can stay back longer and let a cruise go. I mean, it, it's amazing. It's almost nearly indefensible. But if you ever uh, uh, have been inquisitive about studying wars, just Google the last three or four wars that Israel had and see how miraculously they won them. Crazy stuff happened. Huh? Tanks going through minefields. <laughs> like, there was like a light, something that was guiding me, and the whole unit just followed the light. <laughs> and guess what happened? It was a big tank, it was a big minefield. All of us who know about minefield, if you don't have the map or the path to go where you're going, somebody's gonna get blown up. I mean, it, the chances, the way you, the way you set a minefield. You have to know the quarter. It was like an angel showing them the quarter. I mean, just a miraculous things happening like misfires. And, and you've heard about people, you know, somebody shooting at somebody in the gun jam and all that kind of stuff. It's so many stories. If you just re read about the battles and always overwhelmed. If you look at Israel, they're surrounded completely by their enemies. From Jordan, you look at all of these, look at all those enemies they got around them. But how is it that everybody else is living in the desert, but when you go to Israel, it's green? It's like an oasis. Water, the Bible talks about in the Old Testament that water will come out of the desert. And it's happening even now. God is doing what he said he was going to do. He said, I'm going to increase you. So I say that to say, we better have a better love for Israel. We've been taught as Americans, uh, particularly black Americans have been taught to hate Israel. Remember old Jesse Jackson in Jaime Town? Y'all remember that? That's a dangerous thing because the Bible says what? If you bless who? What's going to happen to you? You're going to be blessed. But see, but see, here's the problem. Jesus said this in his teaching. He said, it's your tradition that's going to make the word of no effect. Tradition. What kind of tradition? Your nationalistic tradition? Hmm? You're, 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 you know, you know I, 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 I used to struggle a lot with the Africans that we have in our congregation because we got them from Nigeria. We got them from Uganda, Kenya. You know, I said, hey, guys, y'all too tribal. Too tribal. It's your tradition that makes this word of no effect. Everybody got to be born again. Everybody got to be born. I don't care where you're from. Huh? I don't care if you're from Haiti. I don't care if you're from Jamaica. I don't care where you're from. We all got to be born again. Your tradition means nothing. It's this. It's kingdom. We want the kingdom to come. The first prayer that you were ever taught as a child. Huh? Your parents were probably ill-informed and thought it was a prayer, but it never was a prayer. And I'll tell you why I don't want to offend anybody, but we, we will quote it. It's the instruction from prayer, Matthew 6. How's it go? Our Father, how's it go? Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Stop for a minute. When I was a kid, I thought Howard was his name. It's hallowed be his name. In other words, the instruction for prayer is our Father who art in heaven, hallow his name. God, I bless your name. That's what you got to do. It's an instruction for prayer. It's not prayer. When you pray that, I don't care if you at the church and it, our Father, with all that. It, it's not prayer. And I love the simple example. Pastor, give me that Bible real quick. Give me your Bible. Give me your Bible. Now, Pastor, give me your Bible. Give me your Bible. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What are you saying? God, I want you to bring heaven to earth. That when you pray, that's how you need to be praying. There is no sickness in heaven. So, Father, bring healing from heaven down here on earth. Amen. That's instructions. Blake's a mechanic. I've never seen him read the instruction manual to the truck. Or have you, Blake? <laughs> You'll look stupid like I'm, I'm saying, give me your Bible. 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. He said, and deliver us from evil. If I've already been delivered, why am I asking for deliverance? If I already have the Bible, what am I asking? That's the problem with the church. Just because someone told you that was the, how could that be the Lord's prayer? What is a good sign that this might be my suit? Beside it fits. I got it on. Pretty good, pretty good indication that's mine. Can we use that same logic with Jesus? When Jesus prayed, here you go. Turn to Matthew chapter 17 real quick. I didn't mean to go to here, but I'm going to go. I, I see some looks. I got to go there. Uh, 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 look at uh, John, John, John chapter 17, John chapter 17. Mm -hmm. John chapter 17. Okay, and, and, and here's why. If, I, if, I, if there was such a thing as the Lord's Prayer, this is it. Here it is, here it is. Can, can, can we read it? It says, Jesus spoke these words. Jesus told them in this manner pray over in Matthew 6. He said, this is the instructions for prayer. Is this, oh, I, I, don't, I don't mean to embarrass anybody, but is this a newsflash for somebody? You know, because most people go to church and don't understand that the instructions is not the thing. It was the instructions to this is how you pray. This is how you do it. You enter the gates with thanksgiving. You hollow his name. You just don't come bum rushing daddy and you didn't cut the grass. You treated mama bad talking about give me a quarter. You can get knocked out. Look at John chapter 17. It says that Jesus spake these words, lift up his, his eyes into heaven and said, who said? Who said? Okay, Jesus said. Okay, so these are the words of Jesus, right? He said, Father, the hour has come. He said, glorify your son that your son may, oh, uh, uh, may glorify you. He says, as you have given him authority over all, all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is life eternal or eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God, Jesus Christ who you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me. And now, O oh Father, glorify me uh, together with yourself, with the glory which I have with you before the world was. He goes on and he's praying all the way to verse 26. This, I suggest, would be the Lord's prayer. Because he prayed this prayer. The other is instruction. And I think when we understand and have a clear understanding, then we can be affected. Which of you could take the keys to my car, go into your car and punch your button and it works? It doesn't. The problem is you have to have the right key. Even though it's a key, it's got to be what? The right key. So the number one thing to know that this thing is winding up is the repatriation of the Jewish people back to Israel. Second is a surging apostasy. What does that mean? There's a lot of people that are turning away from the faith. Huh? And in and, and, and Matthew, in and, First and Timothy chapter 4, remember? He expressly says in the last days, he said, he said, men will what? They will move away from the faith. He said, they're going to turn away from the faith. The, 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 the Jew lets us understand that we must t attend earnestly for the faith. Huh? Uh, the, I think he just put up there, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and 3. And then in 2 Timothy, chapter 3, 1 through 9, it also lets us understand, hey, listen, the end is coming. Hmm? And there is going to be a falling away of people. There are people who are told, now, you know, once I'm in Jesus, I can never be plucked away. Let me tell you something. 
the Bible wouldn't tell you to earnestly defend and fight and hold on to the faith, huh? Or Matthew chapter 24, uh, when you read that tonight, where, where, where Jesus was having this discourse with his uh, disciples about the end time, he, he wouldn't have said, and they that endure to the end shall be saved. So there's got to be something about this enduring. There's got to be something about this hanging on. There's got to be something about this holding on. No, there's nothing you can do. Jesus has already died for your sins, but you can't turn your back on Jesus. You can't be in a, you know, if you're going to be an apologist for Jesus, that doesn't mean apologize. That means defend. That's what apologetics means. You got to defend this word. And here's what problem is. Jesus said, don't be offended for the word's sake. We've got people now, we're offended to be Christians. We don't want to be, we'd rather be called with the world than to be a part of Christianity. Huh? Next Sunday, I'm preaching a message, don't camp too close to Sodom. We're at a place right now that we're so close to the world that you can't tell the church from the world. It's indescribable. And, 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 and light should be totally different than darkness. Hmm? I don't, you don't have to know me. But there should be something about me. Hmm? I should not, even if I don't open up my mouth, there should be something. There, there's something. And, and, and I say this because it's spiritual. I remember coming here, uh, 40, as I've told you before, 48 years ago as a young lieutenant. And as soon as I got off the plane, the same day, someone asked me, said, man, you got any hash? I didn't know that that was the, that was the drug of the day around here. You, you got any hash? And I'm looking at this poker night. You know who you're talking to. But the guy was right. I just got through smoking hash before I got on the plane. Y'all see, y'all ain't gonna work with me. Somebody say spirit. spirit. Then I come back. Wife and I come back with 32 years now. We've been here. So we came back some time later. I'm at McDonald's, hat turned backwards, down my jeans, shirt tail out. Hey, excuse me, you a preacher? Y'all ain't talking to me. A spirit. I ain't saying nothing. I'm looking like a thug. I'm looking like I do hash. I'm trying to look like a young officer when I got off the first time, hair cut, looking good. And Joker just set up, asked me, do I have any hands? Somebody say spirit. And I'm telling you, those of us who understand the world, hmm, you know, don't, don't, don't act like you don't know. Unless the residue of sin is out of your life completely, huh? And you don't, you're oblivious to that kind of stuff, oh, you'll miss it. Hmm? Oh, when I was in the game, I didn't miss nothing. My wife, you know, over the 30 years, I, I got a, $100 for every time my wife said, you slow. Because she said, that woman just about did everything. <laughs> huh? But give you your number. Give her, the, you know, right here. She's like just flirting away. And she said, you don't see nothing. If, trust me when I tell you, though, when I was in the game, Oh, I wouldn't have missed none of that. Like, boom, hit it out the park. Y- y'all hearing me what I'm talking about? When, you, when, the, when you're not on that station, you can't hear the channel. It, it, you know, I don't care what you say. You can say whatever you want to, but if I'm on this station, I'm not hearing what's on that station. And it's right in front of you. It's the spirit of a person. And that's why we've got to be born again. There is going to be people that are going to turn away from the Spirit of God and the faith in God. That's what the Scripture said. You know, in 2 Thessalonians, let's go there real quickly. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, and then then we're going to get to the last three, and we're going to to be done with this. But in 2 Thessalonians, um, let me see if I can find it real quick. 2 Thessalonians, um, let's look at chapter... Let's look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, chapter 2, chapter 2. 
It says, uh, now, 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 brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together with him, we ask you not to soon, not be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter as if from us, as though the day of Christ has come. He said, let no one deceive you by any means. For that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. Hmm? Listen now, listen. We know that Jesus is coming back again when there's a great falling away in the church. Those of us who have been in the church long time as I have, uh, you see, you don't have to look far to see a falling away from the church. Huh? This place, before COVID, this place was packed. People have turned away from the faith. They've turned away from, that, that may no difference. It could be this church. Go to any church you want to. There is a turning away. But what is interesting, you'll find uh, there's still this love for friendly seeker. You know, somebody's going to tell you a story and tell you, make, make you feel, I ain't trying to make you feel good. I'm trying to make sure you're saved. I'm, I'm trying to make sure you hold on to the things of God. Amen? Here's what it says. Who oppose and exalt themselves above all that is called God and that is worship, so that he sets as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. We're talking about the Antichrist is coming, and he's coming, uh, and he's going to fool many. And the, and, 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 and the thing is, there are going to be many in the church that are fooled. Because even the church now, even mainstream church, who would ever think? The queen was dead not even two months. And now the Anglican church decided it's going to embrace homosexual marriage. Thank God for the African contingency of the Anglican church who said, you can have it. We're, 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 we're getting out. We're not dealing with that. I mean, there is such a falling away from orthodoxy from the church. It's such a falling away from reverence of God. There is no reverence of God. Anybody over 50 knows that when you drunk and there's the church, you walk on the other side of the street. There is no reverence for the man of God. There's no reverence for the things of God anymore. It's gone. It's gone. We, we have now called those things that are wholly common. But when you're young in the faith and you don't know any perspective, you're thinking like, well, this is the church. No, this is not the church that, 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 that commingles uh, with sin. The third thing uh, which would be the, the, the coming Middle East peace. I think we need to understand uh, that there is going to be this push. And, you know, we keep, you know, if there's anything that's happening in the world, we do know this, that there is going to be this push uh, for peace. It, it, you look at 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5 and verse 1 and 2. It says, but concerning the times of the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write you for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. What's going to happen is there is going to be this uh, 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 during this end time that the signing of peace treaties between the Antichrist and leaders of a Western kind of confederacy of nations uh, and, and the nation of Israel uh, will signal this beginning of the seven years, you know, of tribulation. Um, we got to be very particular, you know, when I see news and I talk to my rabbi friend, I'm always concerned about uh, how this is going to play out. The next thing we got to look for is this reuniting really of a Roman Empire. This is what's interesting, the fourth sign of the end uh, 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 of this rebirth of the Roman Empire. You know, at the end of time, 
uh, begins this unfolding, this global alliance uh, will emerge of nations uh, scrambled from political power, uh, dwindling uh, economic resources. Look at it now. Look what's happening. The world's economies are really going down. It's amazing. And it's almost like it's intentional. It's almost like the economies are going down intentionally. We need to embrace uh, this year. You know, Germany last year, can you believe what they did last year? I want to see what they're going to do this year. You know, we, we braced here for uh, I- increase like last year. I think we paid 29000 uh, in utility bills here at this church. Twenty-nine. Uh, at our homes, those of us who own homes, if you're renters, you don't know that. But I got a bill at my home is like just gas alone is 750 a month. Gas bill, not electric and water. So total utility is probably about 13, 1400 a month. Last year, the Green Party, a couple of years ago, the Green Party took over Germany. You know what the Green Party did? They started up three coal power plants because Germany would have froze this year. See, that's y'all oblivious to it. All y'all do is turn on your heat. But Germany would have froze this year if they didn't go back to that. They really need to go back to nuclear. But see, these, see the strong deception and the delusion says we can destroy the earth. What God would allow you to destroy what he created? So therefore, you got global warming and you got these, these, these carbon credits going around. This is a money-making deal, y'all. And only the poor are really suffering. You think India is going to play this deal in China? No. With two billion people? No, they're not. They're going nuclear or any kind of other way they can go. But if we are in one world, if this one over here and this one over here is doing all the polluting, it don't change the atmosphere. I mean, it's just crazy. In America, we allowed Russia to have a pipeline. We stopped our pipeline. We stopped all natural resources, all natural gas, clean gas, all of it finished. And now gas in America is getting ready to go up. It's an election year. We're going to see what we're going to do. Just shut off seven reserves in Alaska. The only thing that can happen, you don't have to have an MBA like me to understand this thing called supply and demand. When the supply is down, the price goes up. It's almost like it's designed, and it don't have to be. We're sitting on more oil in America, and it's crazy. And we're told stuff that y'all don't even think about sometimes. You know, Gates and all these, I'm talking about overpopulation and, and all of this kind of stuff. You've heard it. Do you know we can put all, about eight or nine billion, how many people in the world? Two billion in, 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 in China, about two in India. If you round the ball, it's maybe seven or eight billion. You know they all can fit in Texas? You say, what? How's there a shortage of space? They all can fit in Texas. But we got stupid people that don't think just like you thought. Put a mask on. It'll help you. How a mask going to help you when you can smell flatulence through the mask? That's stupid. You know it didn't work. But you are afraid, and when you get fear, you don't begin to think. You just won't think. And we're in a place right now where strong delusion is coming. Brilliant people talk about, I didn't wear my mask. And I, well, those people wasn't wearing masks. Hold up. I thought you was wearing your mask to protect you. What does my mask have to do with you if it works? Oh, see, y'all ain't going to talk to me. It's just common sense. In the last days, men will lose common sense. They will look for leaders, huh, that they could come behind. And, 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 and out of all of this political uh, and, and, and crazy rumble jumble, quickly shifting situations, a, clo- a coalition of nations of 10 leaders will emerge to protect the interests of the West. And this alliance will reinstitute what is called the Roman Empire. All you have to do is look at Daniel chapter 2, verse 41 through 44. And when you look at it, 
it, it, it, it, it, it, it, it, we, we, we call it the group of ten where it is symbolizes the ten toes on that great statue. In Daniel 7, y'all have heard this before and you, you, you understand it. Just review for you. In Daniel uh, chapter 7 and Daniel chapter 7 and 7 and chapter 7 and 24, go back and look at it. Uh, the same ruling, um, this, the same ruling um, oligarchy of, of, of ten leaders is symboled by what? It's symbolized by the ten horns on the beast that represent the last world empire, which is the Roman Empire in its final form. It, 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 it's, it, it's, its leader, its final leader is going to be who? The Antichrist, right? We'll, 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 we'll eventually be able to seize control of these ten leaders and, and, and consolidate power uh, very much like the Roman Empire did uh, in the past. So you got to understand, these are the things that are going to happen before the end happens. And the last one is globalism. We can see this clearly. Maybe four is going to be hard for you to kind of grasp and see it. But you can see this globalism right now. How many, remember Bush Senior, One World Order? They've been talking about this forever. One World Order. Huh? You remember when they in, uh, uh, elected Tanji Brown Jackson, the last Supreme Court justice, to get on? They asked her more than one or two questions. The crazy question was, what is a woman? Y'all remember that, right? And she still didn't answer it. What the court is trying to do on the left is line itself with the world court. Why would we as an American want to line with the world court? Why would we want to do our health policy according to the World Health Organization? These are crooks and criminals. It's all about money. I'm telling you, you need to understand, globalism is not anything to do with Christianity. The devil has a way to make what's right look demonized. Hey, he don't hear racist, racist, trying to build a border. You know how much money we spent Last year alone in the United States, building borders around the world and building fences for everybody else. But it, the system don't work until America's destroyed. We can't see it. Globalization is not good. How do I know, it, I, how do I know globalization don't work? I know firsthand it don't work. Hey, Daddy. How come I can't stay out till 11 o'clock at night? I'm taking myself back to the 60s now. <laughs> Loading them get to stay out. Dwayne and the Dolphins, I want to stay out with them. They don't live here. Then he starts swinging and beating me. Showing me where the boundaries and borders are. <laughs> I learned about Boundaries and borders in the 60s. What happens in this house had nothing to do with what happened next door. In fact, my father used to start opening up the window, Pastor, when he beat us. That was a scripture. He said, rebuke the elders openly so the rest of them will fear. In other words, this is what goes on in this house. I'm not concerned about what happens over here. You can't have charity unless you have charity at home first. You get on a plane, what's the first thing they tell you in the instructions on the plane? In the case of loss of cabin pressure, the mask above you may fall down. It said put your mask on before you help others. How are we going to help the world and we can't even help ourselves? But if we destroy that and cause globalism, it's going to be easy for one world leader, one world order. Do y'all see it? What? Listen, this is a fight. Those of us that have been to combat would never think of it. Huh? I saw 10,000 soldiers, at least it had to be, surrendering. And, and I had to stop our guys. Don't give them, we, we still got to go. We, we're out running the supply line. They're throwing water. American soldiers are just nice. They had their boots off. They threw their weapons down, but we're giving our food and giving all this stuff away. 
And I've seen them, you know, just surrendering. Man, uh, hear me what I'm telling you. We can't be so benevolent that we're going to say, oh, put your boots back on. Here, take your ammunition. Get yourself some rest. Eat some of my rations. And then, come on, let's fight again. No, sir. No, sir, we got to take it back to the hood. If I'm going to beat you, I'm going to beat you until you, you, you quit. And I'm not going to help you until you quit. Quit, quit. This whole piece and these five things are going to be the end of what's going to happen. It's going to be easy with this globalization, electronic transfers, electronic banking, take cash out of the system. You know, they floated it for a second. Boy, it didn't go long. Biden administration said on cash apps. And after that, we're going to look and have, you have to pay tax. Boy, folk got mad. Like, hold up just a minute. Now we got to track your birthday money. Cash is going to be gone. Cashless society. How do I know the mark of the beast is going to work? Because round test trial one already happened. You can't come into the store unless you got on the mask. You can't get on this plane unless you put on a mask. Guess what happened? If everybody quit flying, the industry will go broke or say they'll change the rules. You know what the doctors are doing? The doctors Association of America just put out on Friday. They're, they're starting this mask thing again. They said, uh-uh. We ain't coming to work. In other words, the Surgeons and Physicians Association of America said, Y'all know these masks don't work. You knew they didn't work at first time. They ain't work. We ain't doing it. It ain't happening. Do you know if people stand up and don't show up to work? They, it, it, it's too many of us. The airline would have to stop if you don't buy. Just don't get on the plane. But the problem is when I put enough fear in you, and, and, and you would believe them if they'd come back and say, you know, we were wrong the first time. But this time, you ain't hear none of that. They're doubling down on stupid, and we're stupid enough to double with them. I'm just saying. When economics and banking and credit cards and everything is tracked, they own you. Own you. How can it work? I've seen it work in India. I went on a trip, missions trip to India, checked in my regular hotel before we got ready to go to the bush, did my regular thing, pulled out 500 bucks, and said, hey, I need to get some uh, rupees. They laughed at me. He's like, hey, you funny, right? I said, no, I want $500 in rupees. They said, cash is no good here now. Moti had a meeting last night. He had all of the cabinet members, because those were the real crooks. And he said he, devout, he changed the money. He said there can be no more withdrawals from the bank except for so much money, and there can be no more deposits inside of a month more than 2000 People were jumping off roofs and all kind of stuff. You know why? Because 80 to 90% of all business in India was cash-based and black money, and not on the books. And he was trying to clean it up. And he knew the guys in the room had all the money. So that was people's diaries. People were jumping off buildings, dying. It was crazy. So I've seen it happen. When they take cash out of the system and make it go electronic, you know how many businesses are going to just be gone? How many of y'all go to dinner around here and, and the sign says, cash only? You know that's against the law in Germany? They really should have a cash register. It's not against the law to be cash only. It's, a cash, it's against the law when they come out. You ever seen them? They have these little tablets that have the beer thing on it, and they write up. They take a calculator, and they write up with the thing, and they give you that. Uh-uh. Everybody's supposed to hit a cash register. There's a cash register with a V on the back of it that sends a signal to the finance arm for taxes. 
So when someone gives you that receipt, 100%, it's a cash business. So they take so much money and put it into the system and so much money they put on the side. So when they go to cash, when they go to electronic only, all that cash on the side will be worth nothing. We saw it here in Germany, didn't we? The Deutsche Mark went. <laughs> Who was here when it changed? Huh? Coffee was, co co coffee was like one euro, one euro, one Deutsche Mark. And then all of a sudden it become one euro. Just changed the sign. And the Deutsche Mark was like half, not even half of a euro. It was crazy. The valuation of the money just changed the sign. We've we seen it happen. And, it, and guess what? They gave a grace period of like three years. And they gave a limit of how much money you could bring in. In my own house that I own, since nobody knows where it's located, I can say it. There was another owner between us, so you won't know who the owner is anyway. I did some remodeling in my house. Took the ceiling out. <laughs> and lo and behold, look what I found. I, I know the guy, so I called him up and said, hey, it ain't worth nothing, but do you want it? <laughs> he said, did you find anything else up in there? <laughs> hey, hey, the system will get you. So are you going to be on God's system? Or the man system. How many people believe that Jesus is coming back? How many people understand that you better get your house in order? Huh? How many believe? Listen, listen. You can't get your wife fixed until you fixed. You can't get your, your, your husband fixed until you fixed. You got to put your mask on first. And we need to get serious about the things of God. I'm telling you right now, as sure as I'm standing here, here's how the enemy works. you got to understand the same playbook. He will use race every time to divide the church and divide people. Don't buy it. Those of us who are military, been around military, I mean, we're, we're perfectly comfortable in the life we live. Because guess what we know? When bullets are fired, I don't care what color you are. What I do care about, can you shoot? <laughs> huh? When the bullets are flying and I need to get a call in, I don't care what color the radio operator is. He better know how to get some jamming and all kind of stuff to get me to headquarters. You, you got them online yet, sir? When, when I need some evasive good driving, huh? I don't care what color the driver is. I'm trying to sleep. I need somebody. Y'all follow me what I'm saying? We understand that, but the world doesn't because the world's so myopic. You got folks in America, only 19% of the people have a passport. They haven't even been out of their hometown 50 miles. So their mindset is broken. And when you go back home, they want to know, how did you? Well, I found out that, you know, you the one that's messed up. <laughs> but they can keep you ignorant on race. Next thing. Is this whole gender thing. They're making you feel like you're crazy and you lost your mind because you don't accept it. You can't accept it. The word of God won't allow you to accept it. No, no, no. Well, what, well, what would you do, Bishop, if you're in the military? Easy. I, I commanded enough time to know here's how to handle it. John Grimsley. Hmm? I would never call him his name or her name. Every time I address you, we'll be by your rank. Captain PJ. Always. I would never, I ain't got to never say ma'am, huh, her, yes, Captain. I don't say yes, sir. Yes. Huh? Well, you're not personal. You never call my name. Where is that in the regulation? 
Just don't play their stupid games. But you got to make up in your mind who you are. It don't work unless you feed into it. But then some of you got to make a decision on, you know, what are you really going to do? Is that job that important? Is it more important than your life? Maybe you need to be seeking unemployment if you, you know, if you can't balance it. Some people are so angry, you, need, you probably need to get out before you hurt somebody. He's coming back. Give me five reasons that you know that we got to look for as a church. Let me say goodbye to the people that have been listening. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, hey, listen, um, I want you to consider going to our website and looking at going through the Bible with us in, in um, 30 days, the New Testament scripture. I think it'll be a blessing to you. Nine chapters a day, that's not much. 45 minutes of reading uh, each and every day. You should give that time to an hour uh, to the Lord every day anyway. So would you do that? And I think you will find yourself much better off uh, really understanding the things of God. And we'd love you to do that. And then we're going to look at the book of Revelation when it's all done. We're going to read Revelation twice. Uh, we're going to go through with our 30 days. Then we're going to take the next week, go through Revelation again. And then I'm going to teach, uh, not like I did before, a whole year on Revelation. No, it's going to be a topical kind of thing to kind of give us a general overbook, overview of the book of Revelation. The Bible says, blessed if you even read it and those that hear that book. So thank you so much for joining. And then those of you who want to, to support us uh, financially, Yes, we do take care of 320 kids every day with our uh, children homes around the world, India, Sri Lanka, and our learning centers, our pastors uh, from uh, Liberia, India, Sri Lanka. Uh, please, um, those are the churches that we support in the East, and uh, we, 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 we would appreciate your support and help. Bishop Kunji is already still out there in Sri Lanka in our mission field. Uh, uh, we solicit your prayers and financial support. Thank you so much for joining us, God.